You want to buy a MacBook Air and you don't know which one to buy because you can go $9.99 for the previous Gen M1 and you can go $11.99 for the new Gen M2. Well, I'm here to help. So let's, let's figure this out together and understand, do you need to spend the extra money or not? I'm just saying, okay, I'm throwing a little bit of fun your way to keep it, keep it spicy. The notch. Yes, I said it. The horrible notch, notch, notch. Apple, why do you do this to us? They look a lot more 2022 and a lot less 2012. M1 MacBook Air was a game changer when it came out. It has been Apple's best selling laptop, period. I think some of that is because it's also the least expensive. Call me old fashioned, but some of us still have to buy our own gear and it's important that we can actually afford it. So that may be a part of it, but there's no doubt about it. The M1 chip was a game changer. It was a lot more powerful using a lot less power and therefore delivering a lot more battery life than the previous Intel MacBook Airs that existed. We are talking about a device that literally for me personally changed the way I interact with my laptop. It used to be that I would always stress like I do with my phone. Did it charge overnight? Is it 100% in the morning? With the M1 MacBook Air, I found that I didn't need to do that anymore. I would go days without charging it sometimes. I would open the lid and see that it was on half battery and it wouldn't even phase me anymore. That wasn't the case before this. This created a fundamental shift in expectations of what a laptop was capable of doing, mainly on the go as a mobile device. The battery outlasts my iPhone. The battery outlasts pretty much everything. And it became my daily driver, not because it was my favorite device to use, because I do have some issues with using Mac OS and there's things I prefer on Windows and vice versa, but mainly because of the battery life. It's a little long in the tooth now a year and a half later, and Apple have released the new M2 powered MacBook Air. They weren't content to release a new chip. They actually put it in a whole new chassis. And as you look at this, just look at how beautiful it is. It's like a mini version of the MacBook Pro. It's thinner, but not quite in the same way as the previous gen Air. Instead of the tapered look, it's a flat square look and I like it. I like it more. I was never a fan of the tapering. It's the same ports all the way around. Two USB-C Thunderbolt ports and a headphone jack. The main difference here on this exterior is that now you've got the MagSafe charger back. So instead of using a USB-C port to charge, you now have two USB-Cs plus a charging port. So in real terms, Apple gave you a port back and that's important. Do you like that? Important because it's ports. I'm just saying, okay, I'm throwing a little bit of, a little bit of fun your way to keep it, keep it spicy. But they've essentially given you a third port for free. The feel of these corners, the roundedness of the bottom, exactly like the 1460 MacBook Pro. I like the unification of the body. I think it was a smart move and the right move. Another interesting little nugget as you're looking at the chassis and the device itself, notice that the M1 MacBook Air has MacBook Air clearly identified and stamped on the front of the screen there, just below the display, just in case you forget what computer you're working on. Don't seem to have that on the M2. It's actually got no marking whatsoever. No embossing on the underneath like the MacBook Pros, no name on the front of the screen like the previous gen MacBook Air, nothing. I talk about this in the main video too that I did on this review. I think it was gonna be a MacBook. I think they were thinking about ditching both the previous gens and just going back to the good old MacBook period and maybe at the last minute it changed or something like that. I personally think that would've been a good move, but hey, you know, just, it is what it is. They give you a notch instead and everybody knows the notch equals Apple. The notch. Yes, I said it. The horrible notch, notch, notch. Apple, why do you do this to us? I much prefer the camera module on the M1 MacBook Air than the notched module on the M2. But there's a trade-off. As you look at the screens here, you can see the bezels are much smaller. They look a lot more 2022 and a lot less 2012. If we wanna say that, it looks more modern, it looks sleeker, it looks cleaner. And on the subject of screens, look at these comparisons here. I've got some video for you. There is definitely an improvement on the M2 versus the M1 
in terms of the quality of the screen and also the brightness as you're looking at it. One of the things I like about MacBook screens across the range is that generally for me, in my working environment with my lighting and all that kind of stuff, usually I can work comfortably at about a half brightness. When I'm on a Windows device, that can be all over the place because the devices are so different, but generally I need to be on more than half. Sometimes I need to be on three fourths or even a little bit higher because the screens just aren't very bright. And what that means is I'm burning more battery, right? If I've got a three or a 400 nit screen, you know, I'm having to drive it almost to its max capacity. If I have a six or an 800 nit screen, well, half of its capacity, and I'm still getting about 400 nits of brightness, which seems to kind of work for, for Mikey's eyes. Something to bear in mind if you're comparing either of these devices to a Windows machine, look at your specific Windows machine and understand what kind of brightness levels will you need that screen to be because it will have a bearing on battery life. Neither of the MacBooks have touchscreen. Apple's still fighting that and insisting we buy another device with the iPad instead of giving us touchscreen on the laptop itself. So it is what it is, just know it going in. And really, as you look at the body, the other big changes here from the M1 to the M2 MacBook Air, let's take a look at these keyboards. Nothing really wrong with the M1 keyboard. Definitely love the new M2 Air keyboard. It, again, is in the same design aesthetic as the Pros. The keys are a little larger. The action is beautiful. Your fingers will glide over these keys. It's very effortless to type. It's very easy to type. And if you look at the F keys here, instead of having this little skinny row that we have on the M1 MacBook Air, we've now got full height keys. I know that sounds like a little thing, but you use them more than you think, turning brightness and volume up, those kind of things. It's just nice to have a regular size key that you, you solidly hit every single time. Trackpad doesn't really feel a whole lot different to me. As I look at that, the haptics are great. We know Apple makes great haptics and it's a nice big trackpad. From an exterior perspective, you know, that's really the main differences between the two. And make no mistake about it, you're paying the $200 for the exterior. The difference for the M2 chip versus the M1 is not that great. Is it better? Yeah, sure it is, it's the M2. But it's manufactured on the same process as the M1. So I like to think of it more like an M1 on steroids rather than a completely different chip. Still 8 gig 256, but the storage at 256 is actually slower than the MacBook Air previous gen. They used to have two 128 modules in there that you could write and read simultaneously. That's quicker than one 256 module because you know the highway can only have so much traffic. And I think that's a bit of a, a black eye here for anybody looking at the lower spec base model, which I think is the majority of people buying this. You are getting a slightly inferior product there on the drive. Webcam improves 1080p versus 720p. So you're gonna look a little bit, a little bit prettier, a little bit nicer, brighter maybe, you know, step in the right direction, but you're paying for it, right? And that's really the challenge with this because if you start to spec it out and go to the higher end, you get dangerously close in price to the 14 inch Pro. And interestingly, while we're talking about this price differential and how you can get carried away when you're specking these out, check out this comment here from Miko Haranen. Hope I'm saying that right. But I think this is gonna be the reality for a lot of people. You know, we get carried away, we do these upgrades, we spend all this money and then reality sets and it's like, whoa, hang on a second. How much did I just spend? And I didn't really get anything meaningfully different for it when I could have spent so much less and still been able to do everything I want to be able to do. And I think the Apple of today has created that kind of an issue. And in the real world, for those of us that, you know, work hard and save to buy these things, it matters. So choose carefully, my little pad ones. I don't know that the chip alone would make me want to spend another $200. It's about 18, 20% quicker. And that sounds like a lot, but in single core performance, for the majority of day-to-day -day things that you and I are gonna do, it really isn't that much better. In multi-core, there's a little bit of a jump, but this M2 is not the generational leap from M1 that M1 was from Intel. Ultimately, your decision is really gonna be based more around, do you like the look and feel of the new one over the old one enough to pay 20% more Interesting, 20% improvement in the chip, 20% improvement in the price. Wonder if there's a correlation there or not. What do you think, coincidence or 
clever marketing, let me know down below. Do you like this new shape and the colors? But let me warn you on the colors, and I talk about this in the main review, the blue MacBook Air M2 has issues. There are a lot of people talking about scratches in a week around the USB-C charging port and beyond. This does not look like a durable finish on this device. So if you were thinking, oh, I want the blue one, I gotta pay the extra money, Mikey's advice is don't buy the blue. Starlight is another new option, but it's not that dissimilar to the silver. And so again, colors aren't really gonna be the driver here. It's really down to is that 0.3 inches larger screen that's a little bit nicer and a little bit brighter with a slightly nicer keyboard, a slightly nicer chassis worth the extra or not. I don't believe there's even a conversation here. The M1 is a capable machine. It still runs everything you're gonna to wanna to run today and most likely will for tomorrow at $200. For me, it's a coin flip. Is it a coin flip for you between the two? Let me know what you think. Let me know why you think it. So it helps other people with their decision-making process. And check out these cool videos over here if you want to see more M2 MacBook Air. Till next time, Scott and be amazing.